I'm excited and I'm blessed to be able to share the Word of God with you guys tonight. So as we get into this, I hope you guys are ready. It's my prayer and my hope that this is going to be a blessing to each of you. Today we're going to be talking about the sin of pride and the blessing of humility. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you that we have the opportunity to read your word, to learn from it. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me these truths, that each one of us would walk away today with a greater understanding of who you are and the plans that you have for us. Lord, that we would begin to grasp this concept of humility. We love you, Lord. Amen. I want to talk about pride first. Pride has been a really difficult thing for me over the years. I've struggled with it a lot, especially in high school and junior high. As I look back at my life, I see all the different ways that I let pride rule my attitude and my decisions. When I'd be in conversations with people, I would always have to bring up the things that I've done, like the accomplishments I've made or the people that I know always in efforts to make myself look better, to make myself look good, to make myself look perfect. But any amount of acknowledgement or compliments from people always left me feeling more worthless than before. I realized that my confidence was at an all-time low. I wasn't sure of the things that the Lord had called me to do. My life felt fake. I would often lie, I'd make up stories. I would say almost anything to get people to like me, to get people to think that I'm greater than what I am. And this was a struggle for me for a while. This pride, it crept into my life, this sin of pride, and it brought a lot of destruction and a lot of pain. Today I want to look at the Bible and I want to pull out some truths bring some clarity to what pride does to us, and then show you what God's called us to, which is this, this spirit and this attitude of meekness or humility. When it comes to wisdom, the Bible is full of verses teaching us the danger of pride and the power of humility. Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Proverbs 18, 12, before downfall, the, hot, the heart is haughty. But humility comes before honor. Before destruction comes into our lives, the Bible teaches us that pride comes in and it brings death. It brings pain. It causes us to fall. God gives us a clear message throughout all of this. The Bible teaches that God will always scorn individuals who are full of pride and that he will uplift those who are genuinely humble. There are several stories throughout the Bible of different people who are humble. We also get along with that lots of stories of people who were full of pride. And we get to learn and we get to glean from their experiences. From King David, who refused to kill his enemy, King Saul, on two separate occasions. You can read about this in 1 Samuel 24 and 26. So the prophet Daniel, who strove to serve God and did not seek riches or glory, The Bible shows us that the type of attitude that God desires is one of humility, one of meekness. On the other end of the spectrum, in pride, you have examples of King Saul, Nimrod, and even Satan himself are famous examples of pride, leading to a catastrophic downfall. Jesus himself said that he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven because the devil's pride caused him to attempt to overthrow God. As crazy as that sounds, um, a lot of us act in a similar manner. When pride creeps into our lives, it causes us to want to uh, overthrow the authorities that God's placed in our lives. When we think of ourselves greater than we ought to, it causes death and it causes destruction. The thing that the Lord seeks after is that we would have hearts that are humble, hearts that are meek. That's what I want to talk about today. In Matthew 5, verse 5, it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. This comes from the Sermon on the Mount, which is a long sermon that Jesus preached to the disciples and the people who gathered around. This is the third beatitude from this sermon. 
I think the most important question whenever we think about Beatitudes is, what does this have to do with God? How does this thing bring glory to God? When we think about meekness and everything in our lives, we're presented with this question, this important question that is, how does this thing bring glory to God in the name of God? In verse 16, he said this, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to God, your Father who is in heaven. We get this picture that God does not just care about us doing good deeds or good character, but it's those good characters that should bring the glory and the fruit of God's kingdom to pass. This was the passion of our Lord's life, therefore it is the passion of ours, and we must ask this, What does meekness have to do with God? How does becoming meek and being meek promote promote the glory of God's name? In answering this, we're going to discover a lot of facts that meekness is a very beautiful thing and a really powerful thing, even though it may be painful at times. Today I want to try and paint a portrait for you of what a meek person looks like, what it means to be meek and have meekness in your life and humility. And as we do that, um, when Jesus said this in Matthew 5, uh, it gives us an allusion to Psalm 37. This verse in Psalm, it says this, The meek shall possess the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. As we read this, we notice this parallel between Matthew 5, when Jesus is preaching, and in Psalm 37, and we get the exact same wording, the exact same picture. That there's this blessing that comes to those who are humble and those who are meek. In verse 9, it says, Those who wait for the Lord shall possess the land. So we can conclude from this that the people that wait for the Lord are meek. That meek people are people who wait for the Lord. In verses 5 through 8, we read this. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your vindication as the light, and your right as the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourselves over who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. I want to give you the characteristics of what it means to be meek or to be humble. The first one is this. Meek people, they trust in God. They believe that he will work for them and vindicate for them. He will fight for them when others oppose them. Biblical meekness is rooted in the deep confidence that God is for you and not against you. The second thing is this. They commit their way to God. The Hebrew word here for commit means literally to roll. What that means is meek people have discovered that God is trustworthy. So they roll their plans, their life, their businesses, their problems, relationships, anxieties, fears, frustrations, all of these things, they roll them and they push them to the Lord. Because they recognize on their own, on our own, we are not sufficient to deal with these things, to cope with these complex obstacles of life. And we need the Lord's help. Meek people trust the Lord that God is able to, and willing to sustain them, to guide them, and protect them. The culture teaches us that humility is something to be ashamed of. It's this attitude that we need to be shameful and fearful and that we're weak. But this isn't the picture that we get throughout the scriptures. In fact, in many ways, it's the complete opposite. Meekness is recognizing that we are not strong enough on our own, and it's seeking after the strength of the one who is. But it also builds in us a greater confidence and faith than we could ever have on our own. The third thing is this, the third characteristic. They are quiet before God and wait for him. Like we mentioned before, meek people are quiet or still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
First, they discover that God can be trusted. Then second, they commit their way to him. And then third, they wait patiently in the stillness for the work of God in their lives. This doesn't mean they become lazy. It means that they're free of frenzy. They have a kind of steady calm that comes from knowing that God is omnipotent, that he has their affairs under his control, and that he is gracious and will work all things out for the good of those who love him. Meek people have a quiet steadfastness about their lives in the midst of upheaval. So when it's chaos all around you, people who are meek are at peace. Some of you guys, you, you know people that are like this in your lives. You know people that are humble, that have grown in this area of their lives. And it's an amazing thing. The ability to trust the Lord and rest in the Lord in the midst of difficult circumstances. The fourth thing is this. They don't fret over the wicked. This means that they don't fret themselves over the wicked who prosper They're not afraid of wicked people. It also means that they refrain from anger because they know that their lives, their work, their families are in God's hands and they trust him. So the portrait that we've painted so far for meekness based on these biblical principles that we've learned is that it begins by trusting God. Then it commits its way to the Lord in the confidence that he will use his power and mercy to do good for us. Then we wait patiently and quiet for the outcome. And finally, we do not give way to anger and frustrations in our lives when faced with oppression and setbacks. We don't worry ourselves over the things that people might do to us because we know we're on God's side. We're on the winning team. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry. We trust him. And when he says to move, we move. What he says to do, we do. And we rest in his presence. I want to paint an even more detailed picture for you guys of what this looks like. So we're going to go through a few more things. Meekness refrains from revenge and defensiveness. Not only do humble people trust God and commit their way to him, we also refrain from revenge and defensiveness. This means that we recognize that that God is the one who takes revenge. He's the one that vindicates for us with God. Meekness is the power to absorb adversity and criticism without lashing back. We don't take matters into our own hands. We don't lash out in anger. We very patiently, we trust the Lord and we seek the Lord. We don't lash out in unrighteous anger. There are times where the Lord will stir up a righteous anger in us to stir us to do something and to take action where there needs to be action taken. But we always rely and we trust in the Lord and we recognize that the Lord is the one who takes vengeance for us. People who are meek are teachable. In James 1, 19 through 21, we see this. Know this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, For the anger of a man does not work the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rank growth of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. People who are meek are teachable. They love the word of God. They recognize that through studying and reading the word of God, we learn to grow. Like I said before, they're slow to anger, like it says in James, slow to speak and quick to listen. James gives us a picture of two different type of people in this. He says, James has in mind two kinds of people. On one hand, a person who does not like to listen to what other people have to say, especially if they speak with authority. This person is quick to speak and quickly becomes angry. On the other hand, we get this picture of a person who's slow to speak and quick to listen. This person recognizes the limitations of their knowledge and the failure of his thinking and so is eager to listen and learn anything valuable that he can. If he hears something new or contrary to his own views, his first reaction is not to become angry and upset. He is slow to anger. He listens and considers it. And when it comes to the word of God, he receives it with meekness. 
when they're things that are true and that line up with the Word of God, we receive those things. We don't get upset because they're not what we want to hear. We listen and we obey and respond to the Lord. But we also recognize that in those moments when we, when we hear things from people, when we listen to different opinions and different ideas, we always go to the truth. We always seek after truth. Meekness cares about the truth. Meek people are open to reason. They're quick to listen. But they always seek the truth. Last thing is this. Meek people, they recognize their weakness and their sin. Galatians 6, 1 through 2 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of weak, in meekness. Look to yourself, lest you too be tempted. What this means is even words of correction, as we have here in Galatians, that speak of this deep awareness that we're flawed, we recognize that I'm a sinful human being, you're a sinful human being. We have issues, we have flaws. So this idea of meekness is that we're able and we're willing to receive correction, and we're also able to reach out to others to help them. But before we do, it says, look to yourself lest you too be tempted. Or you could say it like, let him who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. We recognize that when pride comes in, we're like, man, I'm good. I have no issues. But a spirit of meekness, meekness recognizes I'm weak. And we're constantly checking ourselves to make sure that we're lined up with the Lord, that we're not in a position where we're going to be tempted and fall. This picture we get of biblical meekness is a really powerful and amazing thing. It's something that all of us should seek after and long for. Often we overlook it. We let pride come into our lives, and all it does is it breeds destruction and pain. Let's take a moment, and I want to quickly go over this portrait of what it means to be meek. It begins with this. We put our trust in God. Then because we put our trust in Him, we commit our way to Him. We roll on to the Lord all our anxieties, our frustration, our plans, our relationships, jobs, health. And then we wait for the Lord. We wait patiently on Him. We trust His timing and His power and His grace to work things out in the best way for His glory and for our good. The result of this, trusting God and rolling our anxieties and waiting on him, is that we don't quickly fall into unrighteous anger. But instead, like Moses, we give place to wrath and hand our causes over to God and let him take vengeance on our behalf. And then, as James says, in this quiet confidence that is built up, we are slow to speak and quick to listen. We become reasonable and open to correction. Meekness loves to learn. And it counts the blows of a friend when somebody comes to you and they correct you and they say, hey, this area in your life, it's messed up. You need to fix it. You're in sin. We receive it graciously. It speaks from a deep conviction, recognizing that we are sinned and we are flawed and we're susceptible to our sin. And we depend on the grace of God because we recognize without him, we have nothing. <laughs> Meekness begins with God, and it ends with God. And therefore, whenever we see a person like this, we should give glory to God. And through this, we accomplish the aim of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, that Jesus said, let everything that you do bring glory to the name of Jesus and to God himself. <laughs> and we do this as we carry out all of these different things. I encourage you guys, go through and read Matthew 5. Learn about all these things. As you do these things, the Lord is going to bless you. He's going to grow you. He's going to teach you. And he's going to help you to be able to glorify him throughout all of it. This quiet and openness and vulnerability of meekness that often seems like a weakness is really a beautiful thing but it goes against all of our natural tendencies. It goes against our natural sinful nature. 
and we need help. It requires God's supernatural help that we might be able to accomplish this. And it's through his grace. So all of us, if you're a Christian and you love Jesus, I encourage you, commit to trust him. Commit yourself to be meek, to humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourself or you will be humbled. The truth is, when we allow pride to seep into our lives, the Lord is going to humble you someday. And it hurts and it's painful. We're better off learning and growing now than experiencing the consequences and reaping the consequences of our behavior later. I encourage you, once this uh, live stream is done, once this video is done, take some time and pray and ask the Lord that he would help you to be humble. That if there's any areas of pride in my life or in your life, that the Lord would remove those things. For like the word says, blessed are the meek and the humble, for they shall inherit the earth. There's great blessing in humility. I appreciate you guys joining us tonight. I really hope this was a blessing to you and helpful to you. Um, Stay tuned because we're going to be having lots of new announcements and stuff to come. So if you haven't yet, go follow us on Instagram and Facebook and stay tuned for more. We love you guys. God bless you. Have a great night.